Hey, what's going on, Machine Masters? Thank you for joining us today on this channel. My name is MG The Future. I'll be working in Studio One version four today. And as I was going through some samples and what have you, it made me think of one of the challenges I had when I started out producing, especially as a sample-based producer, and that was working with Baseline. Today, we have so many new tools. Studio One, of course, has Chord Track that makes writing Baselines a thing of the past. But I do notice when I go through Instagram stories and I get feedback from other producers or them sending me tracks that when they sample for the first time or in the early process, they avoid doing bass. And that's always curious to me. And I think it might be a side effect of the fact that when you try to sample in the East Coast sense with the early, mid, late 90s styles of music, you have to pitch your samples up. And when you do that, you fundamentally change the pitch of the audio. And up until recently, we didn't really have the technology to tell you exactly how off something is until recently. So I wanted to show you this in the environment of Studio One in case you haven't seen some of these tips before, some of which I've done in Reason and Ableton, but Studio One probably makes it the easiest out of all of them. So what I'm going to do is bring in Serato sample real quick, and I'm just going to drag a sample in there. Hopefully it's one good enough for this example. Um, and just chop up something random real quick and change the pitch of it. I'm going to try this one. I have no idea what this lady is saying. <laughs> Forgive me in advance. So this is what I got so far. What I need to do is speed it up to really make this effect more pronounced, more how the chipmunk style of East Coast hip hop was. So you have two things working against you in terms of the tone. The speed, it's at a different, it's being time stretched because it's at a different tempo than original. A lot of East Coast stuff's between 88 and 95, right? Um, then I'm pitching up manually to get it more chipmunky or emulating speeding up a turntable. So it's going to end up in a pitch in between notes. So although Serato is going to tell us up here, it's around A minor or so, and you put a sub under it, it might actually work because the sub is going to dominate those bottom frequencies. Nine times out of 10, you're going to high pass the sample anyway. But when you're playing bass lines like the East Coast Cats do, you're going to have a problem with it sounding right, especially if you're using sampled basses, which most of them do. So what I would recommend you do is bounce this to an audio file, especially for my Studio One user. And that's real easy. Just do Command and B. That's going to lay our track our track out as an audio file. You can see the waveform. Also, it's going to cut down on your CPU usage. Then we'll do Command M, bring up Melodyne, like I've done in previous videos. And when you double click on it, it's going to extract these notes. And what you're going to notice is it's in a different key. <laughs> But also you get to see what your baseline notes are. So playing the baseline, if you're intimidated about figuring it out, especially as an intermediate or beginner, you can see what notes to hit. Just go to the bottom of the sample, D to A, D to A, D, D, A. And then you can try to figure this out. I don't know what this is about. It looks like D up to E down. But you're going to notice they're not in the center. So if you click one of these notes right here, you're going to see it's negative 40 cents off from its middle pitch. And that's what is going to cause an issue with your played bass line. So you have a few options. You can center the pitches in Melodyne, see how it sounds, because that's important. Or use a third-party tool to uh, pitch it up manually. So let me do that first. I'm going to go to Mix. I'm going to go to Serato Sample Channel, which is this one. I'm just going to call it Sample. And what the one I have is called Pitch Shift. And even Apple has one, but I'm going to use Pitch Shifter by Kilohertz. So now when I look at these individual notes, all I got to do is go, all right, this one is minus 40. This one down here is minus 34. Get an average and do the opposite. So I'm going to increase it plus 35, 40 and see how that sounds. Let's bypass this. You hear it drop just a little bit. So it's a real slight thing, but it makes a world of a difference. Now I can bypass this, get rid of that. The other thing I can do is simple, is just select all within the Melodyne editor and go to my pitch tool and just double click one of these and it'll center all the notes for us. But you notice this part at the end was kind of weird. It's gonna fundamentally change how it sounds. So you wanna play it back before you commit to this. I could live with it. There's some moments in it where it gives us the T-Pain effect when it's dropping from this top note to the bottom one, but it's smooth all the way across and we know it's perfect pitch, literally. So let me add some drums to this real quick, just to fill it out. 
and see how I feel about it once there's drums in place. Cool, so here's a simple sequence that I have with the pattern sequencer. Just a kick and a snare, a hi-hat loop, and then some effects at the end. And from what I could tell, I don't need to worry about the pitching that I did. It sounds fine. Everything blends well with the drums masking that pitch drop. So I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm not gonna use the pitch shifter. I'm gonna use Melodyne as a correction. So you have two options depending on what sounds best for you. Now that I'm looking at this, I can see the bass notes. So D to A, D to A, and then it looks like E to A. You just freestyle that. I don't know what's going on there. So we're gonna need something to play our bass tone with. And for these kind of beats, sample one, of course, very similar to the 808s. The difference, however, fundamentally is gonna be, we're not gonna be using 808s, we're gonna be using bass tones. And there's tons of these all over the place. The problem is you don't know what key they are either half the time. So I'm gonna do Command M here real quick, just to do a check. This is in C, we don't have to worry about retuning it. If you did, let's say it was D, then you would set your sample one to root key D, which is right here. We don't have to do that because the root key is indeed C, according to this Melodyne track. And then the only thing I'm gonna do different here is make this mono. You can change the envelope if you want. You could even put a filter on it. And it's all kinds of different shapes that they have. Low pass is what you're going to want. And then you just check out your Melodyne real quick while you have your bass line synth there. Just double check the notes. Make sure you're not missing anything. Looks like I'm good money, man. D to A to C. just feels better and the moves are to track better because they're in the same uh, tuning basically is what we're adjusting we're, do we're adjusting the tuning more so than the pitch although they're one in the same but it just flows better it's like you don't have to worry about it sounding off or being out of key you can just see it hear it fix it adjust it and then play along then when she's all said and done if you want it to be imperfected you can go to the uh, master channel here and then we can do pitch again go to the pitch shifter and then throw it off a little bit to add that element back to it. Or up. Just a little bit changes it. And also don't don't forget that even if you're not sure about this, you can right click this and go to the event and send it as a chord track. I believe it's audio, extract the chord track, and then just let your baseline follow the chord track. If you're not confident which notes to play or if you're just experimenting, you can see it clearly across the top, D to A, D to A, D to A, and then fill in those notes in between. And then click on the info track on your baseline once you play it and you tell it to follow chords via bass. Mine's didn't change, so it's good money, but in case you didn't have that or you're not confident yet, this will definitely help you, so. Real simple. It's up to you, the world is yours. But anyway, I'm MG The Future. Thank you for joining me today on the Machine Masters channel. Any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave them in the box below. If you use social media, be sure to follow us. I'm at MG The Future on Twitter and Instagram, and also be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace.